every week I get a dozen or more requests. Is my opal Australian or Ethiopian? Well, that's the most common question, but also, is this real black opal or treated matrix opal? Is my opal fake? In other words, is it synthetic or man-made opal? Because I'm the number one opal expert in the world, I mean the universe, and because I'm a great guy, I usually try to help. And I try to give them an answer based on opal expert stuff. In this video, I'm going to show you that you don't need no stinking expert, but you are going to need one of these. An ultraviolet light. These flashlights or torches cost between six and forty US dollars on Amazon and elsewhere. And you're also going to need one of these. These are usually free. Just take a look inside your mouth and you'll find one. Or you could try to buy one or use somebody else's, but that's complicated. It's generally well known that the best quick test to determine the type of opal that you have is the lick test. Touch the opal to your tongue, and if it's Ethiopian wellow opal, it will stick. If it's Australian, it won't stick. When you pull it off of your tongue and it's Ethiopian opal, you'll feel a tug, like it doesn't want to come off. Of course, I have no experience with this myself. It's vulgar to touch your tongue to anything. But people who are, well, less sophisticated tell me that the lick test works very well. But there's good news for us sophisticates, the wet finger test. It turns out that if you wet your finger and touch an Ethiopian wellow opal, it will stick. Let's give it a try. I have a piece of Ethiopian wellow opal here. It's got a smooth, glassy surface, and I've got a piece of Australian opal with a smooth surface. You need the smooth surface. First, I wet my finger in water, not saliva. Australian opal doesn't seem to work. Sheila, stop that. Negative. This is a well-formed crystal of fluorite. In 1852, a guy named George Gabriel Stokes discovered that fluorite would glow when exposed to ultraviolet light. He didn't know what ultraviolet light was, and you don't want to know how he generated that UV light back then. George called this phenomenon fluorescence after fluorite. So let's see how fluorescence can help us identify different types of opal. Let's take a look at the results. This is a beautiful meant to be cabochon. Let's give this a try. Bright blue white fluorescence. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, and beautiful green phosphorescence. Some Cooper opal, dark base. Ooh, nice blue color. Oh, and green phosphorescence. Really nice. Some Lightning Ridge light opal. Very bright blue-white fluorescence and green phosphorescence. That's three for three. Australian boulder opal. Nothing. I'd say that's negative. Both pieces are negative. Untreated Andamuka matrix opal. Blue white fluorescence. Oh, it's also phosphorescent. Andamuka matrix opal treated. Nothing. This is an opal doublet. A very thin layer of opal. Blue white fluorescence. And phosphorescence. Ethiopian wellow opal. Blue white fluorescence. But no phosphorescence. Brazilian opal. Nothing. Wait, there's a little bit of something, just a pale outline. One weaker than the other. Mexican opal. 
You can't see it because there's no reaction. Virgin Valley, Nevada opal. Oh, nice blue-white fluorescence, but no phosphorescence. One of them's positive and one's negative. Aurora opal. Well, that's flat negative. Gilson opal. Mm, that's negative. I've got a lot of dust on my gloves. These are the two stones we use for the finger test, the wet finger test or the lick test. We didn't use our tongue, of course. We didn't because we're not crude. But we've determined that this may be Ethiopian opal and this may be Australian opal, but we're not sure. So let's do a fluorescence test. If we are correct, both may fluoresce. That is, they'll be bluish when you shine the ultraviolet light on it. When we turn the light off, the Ethiopian opal will go black but the Australian opal should have a greenish phosphorescence and that will help us truly determine whether this is Australian opal and this Ethiopian. Oh, we have no fluorescence on the left, which is really good for Ethiopian. Some fluoresces, but some doesn't. And this, I would say, is negative. But the Australian opal shows blue-white fluorescence. And when we turn the light out, it shows phosphorescence. Okay, let's look at the results. Australian opal. All but boulder opal and matrix opal showed strong blue-white fluorescence. In addition, these opals showed strong green phosphorescence. Ethiopian opal was variable. Some showed good blue-white fluorescence, but some was completely negative, and none showed phosphorescence. Brazilian opal was cold negative for fluorescence. Our sample size was small, but I did test 12 different specimens and got the same result. There was no phosphorescence. Mexican opal was similar to Brazilian. I tested 150 or more small pieces of Mexican opal, and none showed fluorescence or phosphorescence. Virgin Valley Nevada opal, a hydrophane opal, was positive for blue-white fluorescence and negative for phosphorescence. Synthetic opal, some were positive and some were not. None of them were phosphorescent. The takeaway is that nearly all Australian opal shows not only blue-white fluorescence, but most importantly, good green phosphorescence, which we did not see in any other type of opal, including synthetic opal that we tested. Okay, let's get right to this. First, I have a public service announcement. People want to know how much sugar and acid is needed to treat their opal. Well, listen up. The only opal that can be treated with sugar and acid is Andamooka Matrix Opal. No other opal will treat that way. And if you find yourself asking about sugar and acid, remember this simple rule. Don't put your goddamn opal in sugar or acid. If you feel that you can't control the urge to use sugar and acid, I suggest that you put the sugar on your cornflakes and put the acid on... Well, don't use acid at all. Give me a break. Who uses acid? Lately, I've been getting comments that have words that I'm just not familiar with. But listen, I may not know all the latest trendy jargon, but I'm still cool. In the last few years, people have used words that I just have to look up. And no apologies for that. Anyway, somebody recently left this comment. Yeet. I mean, what the heck is yeet? I thought this must be some sort of mistake. I mean, maybe his fingers slipped, like... Like maybe he was eating ribs and his fingers were all... Well, I looked up yeet and it's actually a word, sort of. I mean, it can mean a bunch of different things. I assume that he was using it as an expression of excitement or approval. Sort of like bully. As in, bully, good show, old chap. Way to wax the old wicket. So, yeet viewer recently called me a simp. A simp. I told him I'm not stupid. He laughed. Well, that's, that's my interpretation. He said that the giveaways are rigged. So I looked up simp and it's a guy who blatantly favors women over men. Well, I just like to point out that a lot of guys, maybe most guys are like that. And furthermore, most of my giveaways do not go to women. I mean, many of them don't. But some of them go to men. Maybe. And and what if I am a simp? Is that so bad? I don't think so. Bruh. Bruh. I've gotten that a lot in the last few years. And I'm thinking that bra is just a different way of saying bro. But just to be sure, I looked it up and 
I think that it probably does because you can say bruh in nearly any circumstance. Like someone says, what's Oprah's first name? And you say, bruh, meaning he's obviously confused. Or, or maybe your friend cuts his hand off while he's juggling chainsaws. You say, bruh, as in you probably should not have been doing that. I mean, bruh is a good word. It's like bro. I mean, I suggest we all try using bra at least like once a week or once a day or maybe maybe once an hour. Now some of you know I read almost all the comments on my videos and I've had difficulty lately keeping up. I mean I figure that with more subscribers I get more comments and replies are getting tough. So at Pulitzer Opal we take subscribers very seriously. So starting immediately I'm going to need to personally interview all prospective subscribers. So here's what you do. If you want to subscribe, you need to contact Sheila. Set up a Zoom interview. I mean, Sheila's not just a pretty face. She's tough. So be on your best behavior or she'll weed you out. One last thing. In looking at analytics, I found out something extremely important last week. Who's watching? 85% of people who watch are non-subscribers. Well, you know, I'm not stupid. I mean, if a video has 400,000 views and I have like 40,000 subscribers, most of those views are not subscribers, right? I mean, I get that, but, but all of my videos, 85% are non-subscribers? Bruh. And the winner of the Opal Bead Necklace is Wet Win. I think that's how it's pronounced, but it's spelled right. The giveaway this time is the 19 karat Ethiopian opal that I did the finger test on earlier in the video. And no, I did not spit on it. To enter, ask me a question in the comments. It doesn't have to be about opal. I may use some of your questions in upcoming videos. And if I use your question, I'm going to use your name too. So don't ask anything really stupid if that's possible. I apologize for the delay with this video. That shouldn't happen again. You never really know, but as usual, subscribe, like. Nobody ever listens to this. I'll see you next time.